Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Kelly, Kelly, you need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. We welcome you back to Marksman. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside the Von Braun Center in beautiful downtown Huntsville, Alabama, as tonight the Fayetteville Marksmen look to snap their three-game losing skid by facing off against the Huntsville Havoc. Hi there, everybody. I'm Drew Blevins. Thanks for joining us on Marksman pregame. Pivotal game for your Fayetteville Marksmen here this evening as Fayetteville tries to get a little bit more distance between themselves and the eighth and ninth place Pensacola Ice Flyers in Quad City Storm. At one point, this was an eight point spread and the Marksmen looked to be comfortably in the playoff picture. However, after last night's loss brought the Marksmen to three straight on the wrong side of the coin, 
Now they find themselves just in the playoff picture by four points and wanting to get back into the meat of competition. Cue tonight's opponent, the Huntsville Havoc, who got off to a rather pedestrian start this season. At one point, the Havoc found themselves outside the playoff picture, but in classic Linda Tulio fashion, the Havoc find themselves once again at their familiar post among the tops in the SPHL. Huntsville has taken standings points in nine out of their last ten, including each of their last four. And the Havoc right now squarely in third place with 38 standings points. A win tonight could put Huntsville in a three-way log jam for the number one overall seed. And by the way, you might not think that matters very much because it's been a while since the Coffee Cup champion also won the President's Cup. The Huntsville Havoc have never won a William B. Coffee Trophy in their franchise history, and they're one of the charter members of the SPHL. Corey Melkert is one of those coaches who understands all too well just how important tonight's game can be. I thought once again he was rather honest in his pregame comments last night, and once again the marksmen find themselves needing to find a little bit of leadership and certainly needing to find some offense going into tonight's game. We caught up with the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksman prior to tonight's puck drop. You'll hear his comments right after these messages. This is Marksman Hockey. You need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Hey, hey you. Are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. We welcome you back to Marksman Hockey. Drew Blevins alongside the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksman, Corey Melkert. Coach, I know that your team hit a lot of the benchmarks that you emphasized. They kept shot totals down, executed on the power play, went one for one, and ultimately weren't able to pull it out in the third period there. What was your thought on the total effort? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, obviously that's how hockey works sometimes. I think overall, you know, we outplayed them and, you know, we played a decent game, but again, we had you know, specific break get downs that, you know, cost us the game. And, you know, the word that I use is immature. You know, we take, we take an undisciplined penalty, you know, they score on the power play when we're down a goal, you know, again, they score with a minute and a half to go in a period because we're cheating, you know, it's just kind of immature hockey, uh, you know, which is the frustrating part for us because we're not a young team, you know, so that's what's frustrating for me. So, you know, hopefully we can kind of you know dial that stuff in and, and put together 60 minutes here tonight. You're a coach that's done a fantastic job of stopping long losing skids and getting your team back on the right track over your career. This is only the third three-game losing skid that the Marksmen have had since you've been at the helm. What is the key to getting a team back in the right frame of mind and getting that 60-minute effort out? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, the willingness to do the things that make us successful. You know, when we when we get away from 
you know, those things, you know, we could lose, you know, a lot more games consecutively. But if we, you know, want to buy in and, and do the stuff that makes us successful, we can put an end to it tonight. You've got Connor O'Brien going in net. We had briefly touched on him yesterday, someone who's been able to turn in a handful of really good performances for you. He's 2-1 and one since beginning his SPHL career. What do you make of the rookie netminder, and, and what is his ceiling? How good could he end up being by the end of this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, you take the kind of the first game out of it where, you know, I think he was probably pretty nervous, but, you know, ended up winning the game. You know, he's he's given us more than a chance to win both of the other starts. Um, you know, so he's been good, and you know, hopefully he can continue that tonight. You're walking into a hornet's nest here in Huntsville, Alabama. This has been a place that you've personally had success in your limited time, 2-0 and right here in this building. But a Huntsville team that's surging, taking points in nine out of their last ten, you know as well as anybody. Nights are difficult in the SPHL. This is a good opponent you're facing this evening, one that has a lot of veteran players. How do you take some of your young defensemen to be able to prepare them to match up against this group? Yeah, I mean, you just prepare them with video and prepare them as much as you can. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, I always say it, anyone has the ability to beat anyone in this league. So, you know, I, I'm confident that if we, you know, can do the stuff that makes us successful and, you know, the willingness to defend, um, you know, obviously has to be there with this group that we're playing. You know, obviously they're they're a good hockey team and, you know, they've played together for, you know, five or six years. So, you know, they're going to be they're going to be ready to go. And, you know, obviously tough place to kind of come into and, and get two points. But, you know, hopefully we can continue our streak here. Corey, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. He's the head coach of the Fayetteville Marksman, Corey Melkert. We'll be right back with more Marksman pregame right after this. Kelly, Kelly, you need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high-quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finance options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. We welcome you back to Marksman pregame. About 10 minutes or so away from puck drop between the Fayetteville Marksman and the Huntsville Havoc. Let's go ahead and talk about how these two teams are going to line up against each other this evening. For the Fayetteville Marksman, it's the exact same lineup that they had last night. And, of course, all of this has to do with Kyle Moore being activated off of the 21-day IR. Moore had missed the better part of four weeks, finds himself in the lineup here this afternoon. It will be the exact same group that the Marksman had yesterday. The only change to that group, though, is Connor O'Brien is going to get the nod in net. The rookie out of Endicott has a sterling 9-3-0 save percentage. He is 2-1, his only loss coming last Saturday night against the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs by a final count of 3-2. Nick Latinovich is expected to be the starter this evening for the Huntsville Havoc, but that was called into question earlier this afternoon, so we will wait before confirming that's who's going to go in net. Latinovich has certainly been the one to drive the bus in net for Huntsville so far this season, and the only question mark for the Havoc is Jacob Barber. If he's out of the lineup, it will be the exact same look that Huntsville has had over the course of the last two games. If he's able to go in, there is no word on who will be Huntsville's scratch as we await starting lineups to be delivered to us here in the press box momentarily. 
The Fayetteville Marksmen looking to snap their losing skid of three games here this evening. The Huntsville Havoc looking to continue their streak. They've taken points in nine out of their last ten games, including the last four straight. A big crossroads game for both of these two teams. We'll be right back to give you our keys to victory right after these messages. This is Marksman Hockey. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Archman! Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Welcome you back inside the Vaughn Braun Center, Probst Arena. Drew Blevins alongside with you in the broadcast booth. Fayetteville Marksman, we'll call it five and a half, six minutes away from puck drop between the Marksman and the Huntsville Havoc. This is a big time game for multiple reasons as we talked about at the opening of the show. But I think one of the biggest things also to remember is this is a Huntsville team coming into their home barn that, uh, well, they've, they've played well here. They have 10 wins. That's the second best home record in the SPHL. But for the Fayetteville Marksman, the road hasn't been nearly as unkind as it had been early in the season. And up until last night, the Marksman had had a 500 road record. And I think that goes a long, long, long way. But again, it's a proving ground night, a proving ground weekend here for the Fayetteville Marksman. Let's go ahead and turn your attention to tonight's keys to victory, and I apologize for being out of breath. In case you didn't know from the camera angle, it's a long way up here at the Vaughn Braun Center. And, uh, well, I've been doing a little bit of hustling to get back up those stairs, and perhaps I need to hit the gym, uh, as Corey Melkert uh, would say. And you heard him talk about it yesterday, team speed, team fitness being an issue, and maybe I can go in and get a couple workouts in because, man, those are a lot of stairs. We'll start things off with our keys to victory with the visiting Fayetteville Marksman. And, and the biggest thing tonight for Fayetteville is the special team's advantage. This has been a Marksman power play that has been arguably their most potent form of offense. They're operating at better than 23%. Went one for one of the power play last night, and, and you tip your cap to that because that's not exactly something Corey Melkert is looking to build. He's a defensive-minded head coach, the former blue liner, and you don't often talk about a marksman power play that's better than 20% and, and has the ability to score every time they go a man up. But that's great for the marksman, and tonight the reason it's such a big advantage is because the Huntsville Havoc have the last place penalty kill in the SPHL at 72.2%. That's an unbelievably low mark for a Huntsville team that is normally one of the tops in the league in every single category. And I highly doubt we're going to see a hockey game tonight where the Marksmen are only going to get one opportunity on the power play. In fact, it seems much more likely that they could get three or four tonight. And if they're able to execute on those, you really don't know what that could lead to because that could be an offensive explosion for the Marksmen and one they need in a bad kind of way. The other thing for the Marksmen tonight is this has got to be a 60-minute effort, and I think that's becoming a theme for this team. It's becoming a motif, something that they can live by night in, night out for this reason. 
The Marksmen have not had a come from behind win this year. Unless the Marksmen have scored three goals, they haven't won a game this year. And that's where it all comes down to for Corey Melkert is you've got to find a way to get this team motivated and prepared to win games in the third period. The biggest strength for the Marksmen this year is they're not giving up late game leads. They're not blowing games. And they even blew a couple last season having third period leads. They're not doing that this year. Now you have the opposite problem. And working into that comeback mentality, working into that killer bee mentality, is something the marksmen have to do. And I think tonight's going to be another opportunity to do it because Huntsville is a team that is going to lean on you and they're going to make you work for all 60. For the Huntsville Havoc, I think it's critical for them to win the first period. You're going to get a really good crowd energized here at home. It's space night. This is the city's identity, the Rocket City. Specialty jerseys here this evening for the Havoc. And, and you can start to feel the energy in the building. Coming out at home and, and getting a good start critical for this Havoc team because as we told you the Marksmen have not had the pension to earn comeback victories so far this season and the other thing for the Havoc is generating off of the rush there is so much offensive talent that this Huntsville group has and things can go squeewalled in a hurry if you're not prepared to deal with that type of offense so I think tonight for Huntsville you want to take advantage of the Marksmen on the rush you want to beat them with speed and force that marksman defense to really get back and not be able to step up and, and hit you coming into the zone. You want them to have to sag back and absorb the attack. And I think tonight is, is a critical night for this Huntsville offense to keep the train rolling as they look for their 11th home win. Before we take a break and get into the national anthem and starting lineup pause, let's go ahead and have one quick look at the SPHL standings board. At the top, the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs, 40 points. They're up 2-0 on Birmingham, entering the second period at Berglund Center. Peoria got a critical win yesterday. They'll drop the puck in about 30 minutes here this evening against Quad City, a Storm team that is hurting, hurting for a win, but Peoria wants to keep pace with Roanoke. Huntsville in third, 38 points for them. Birmingham hot on their tail at 37. Knoxville has 35 points after their win over the Marksman last night. Evansville has gone from the tops of the league all the way down to sixth with 34 standings points. The Marksman hot on their tail at 32, looking to get a win tonight to tie them. Pensacola holds the last playoff spot at 28 standings points. Quad City not far behind. They also have 28 there in ninth. Macon with 10, Vermilion County with nine. Folks, that's going to do it for us at Marksman pregame. Puck drop between the Huntsville Havoc and the Fayetteville Marksman is next. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. 
Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Von Braun Center in beautiful downtown Huntsville, Alabama. This is Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on the Marksman Radio Network and Hockey TV. Hi, everybody. I'm Drew Blevins. I'll be alongside with you for this one as tonight the Fayetteville Marksman look to snap a three-game losing skid, looking for their 16th win and a chance for head coach Corey Melkert to tie his predecessor, Jesse Kalicki, as the all-time winningest Marksman head coach. Meanwhile, for Glenn DiTullio and his Huntsville Havoc, well, they're looking for their 11th win at home. This is a Huntsville team that has played very well here at Probst Arena. 10-3-1 are the red and black at home so far this season. For the Fayetteville Marksman, Connor O'Brien's going to get the nod in net. It is his fourth SPHL start. He is 2-1 on the season. Nick Latinovich is going to get the nod for the Huntsville Havoc. Latinovich has been the bus driver in net this season for Huntsville. It's space night here in the Rocket City as the Huntsville Havoc are in alternate black uniforms with a space blue bottom of the uniform. Black breezers, space blue socks with the space blue numericals trimmed in Huntsville red. For the Fayetteville Marksman, the only time on this road trip that they will wear their traditional road whites, black numericals, black breezers, and white socks. Marksman will go from right to left across your radio dial to start this hockey game as we are rocking and ready to go here from Roto-Rooter Ice at Probst Arena inside the Von Braun Center. Casey Kulcheski will take the opening draw for Huntsville. He'll be opposed by Austin Alger for the Fayetteville Marksman. 
The puck is dropped. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one from Huntsville, Alabama, as we're underway from the Vaughn Braun Center. Marksman in their own zone. This is Andrew Lane to Corey Tam, who will send it up the near side boards. Huntsville holding the line for a brief moment here, but Lane will take the puck in back of his goal. Pressured up the far side boards as pinching was Nathan Hudgen, as the puck will work around to the near side boards. And Kilcheski will dump it in for the Havoc. Far side wing chasing is Casey Kilcheski. This is sent up the far boards, a rolling puck with the line held and a solid play. And Jacob Barber will send it deep into the far side corner. As we told you during Marksman pregame, Barber was labeled as questionable, but is going to come into the lineup and give it a go tonight. Glenn DiTulio played those cards very close to the chest. Here's Cy Nutkovich. Drops it for Tyler Piacentini, makes a move, fire to the back door. So he was looking for the cutting Derek Pearl, I believe. Was unable to hit him with the pass. This is worked up the near boards by Brian Bowen. He makes a head fake and will have to give to Jack Patterson, the rookie. And he'll opt to push it back as the marksman work up ice. Renda to Patterson, down the near side half wall. He fires, Latinovich catches up against his chest. He'll hold with 18.40 to go in this first period. We remain scoreless here in Madison County, Alabama. Beautiful day here as it's a little bit colder everywhere north of Alabama. Hanging in the mid-50s and low 60s in downtown Huntsville today. Face-off will be to the blocker side of Latinovich as it's won by the marksman. Bowen rips it on net and a good stop by the Havoc netminder. His best of this still very young hockey game, and the marksman will want to generate from there. We told you about Huntsville wanting to attack and generate off the rush. The marksmen are a team that have to set up. And, and don't get me wrong, it's, it's a Fayetteville team that can be dangerous when they're moving in open space, but Corey Melkert has offensive systems, and they work. Given to the far side boards, Bowen tries to thwap it into the zone. Instead, it will come right back out to the center ice circle. Huntsville opts to dump it in. So the marksman will take it up the near boards. Bowen chips. He was looking for Matt McNair. You'll hear from Brian Bowen coming up during our first period intermission report. I thought he was rather keen to talk about his newfound chemistry with his centerman, Matt McNair. Near corner, Havoc will take the puck ripped around the boards. That's too hot to handle for Rob Dara. As the marksman have it up the far side boards at the red line. A pass is snapped and blocked by the Havoc defense. Tanner Nagel coming back to it, knocks it back for Jarrett Cup, and he'll charge to the near red line. Gains it and fires it in as he takes a hard collision here from Casey Kolcheski, and that forces that clear and attempt up and out of play with 17.34 to go in this first period. Face-off will come right back to center. We'll do it all over again. As Connor Fries will tow in to take this draw for the marksman. Fries brought a lot of excitement to Fayetteville. As you get a big name and a trade that is arguably the biggest blockbuster of the SPHL season to this point, but Fries has been unable to produce points yet. And Corey Melkert Still very keen on the way he plays, doing a lot of the little things right. His line is going to generate a chance here as man going forces the turnover. The pass goes to the point. Uncorked by Walsh, and he blew it just wide of the near side post. A good chance for the new marksman defenseman, Cody Walsh, who is in his second stint with the team, played last season with the Quad City Storm. Near side corner, and the Huntsville attacking in. Dropped was Casey Kolcheski as this puck works onto the near side half wall. Pulled free by the captain, McCloy. He'll drop to Troy Murray. Murray backhands it up ice. It's intercepted by Piacentini as he tries to dump it in. He's unsuccessful. Kolcheski also couldn't get it in, but now will be skated into the attacking zone as it's slid by Nathan Hudgen to the back door. Marksman sniff out the pass and are off and running. This is McCloy, curled a pass right off of a Huntsville skate as it'll drift back. Piacentini calling for it near wing. The pass misses him, and this will be icing against Huntsville. 16.25 to go in this first period. I think this has been a good start for the marksman. Two shots on goals, fine. But I think more importantly than that, they've really held the Huntsville offense at bay. And that's going to go a long way throughout the course of this game. We told you it's a key to play 60 minutes. And for the marksman, 
you've got to have good starts to each period, and that has been a problem for this team throughout the course of the year. But for this first period, it certainly looks like they have arrived on time and are playing solid team defense. This is Cy Nukovic. Dumps it to Piacentini, who will curl it to the end wall. Marksmen are there as Glover kicks it up the far boards for Alger. Instead, it's the captain, McCloy, to take it. He'll pitch it to the near wing. Jarrett Cup slides a breakout pass that is intercepted. This will be dumped right back in and blockered aside by Connor O'Brien. That'll be his first technical save of the game. Now some trouble as the puck didn't come out and Barber had an opportunity. Flipped sky high up in the air. If there had been a center-hung scoreboard here at the Vaughn Broad Center, it very well may have hit it. Dumped in a round of O'Brien to the far wing. Slid through the goal mouth harmlessly as this will make its way to Derek Pearl. He'll dump it all the way around the boards to the end wall. Scooped up here, and Pearl will call for it near point. Slides to his defense partner, Kilcheski. His shot knocked down by O'Brien. The rebound taken by the Havoc, Rob Dara. Pitches it up to the point again. Pearl back for Dara, who hangs on to it near circle. Walks it up to the point for a long shot by Dominic Procopio that's blocked down, and now the marksman may have a chance. It's a breakaway for Bowen. One man to beat. He cuts in, looking for the shooting lane, and Latinovic knocks it away with a far side leg pad. Now up the near boards. Here comes Rob Dara with the puck. Dara will curl it in for one man pressure. Kulcheski unable to corral the puck. Corey Tam. Sends it up the far side half wall. Bowen battles through contact. He's got three men on him, still holds the puck, and he's just going to alleviate pressure here. 14.45 to go in the first period. Andrew Lane brings it up ice for the marksman. Chops it into attacking space. It'll be taken away there, and the Havoc will work it back up ice. Chip to the near side wing. This is Hudgen. Walks in, fires. A good stop by Connor O'Brien with a glove side leg pad on a challenging low wrister. Kilcheski. We'll dump it all the way around the boards. Stopped right there by Robbie Fisher as his bid is well wide. That's a free clear for the marksman. And Alex Kilcheski will fire it end over end back to the near side corner. He was behind the red line. This is going to be icing. 4.15 to go in the first period. Good start to this one for the marksman. But we remain scoreless here in Huntsville. Hey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Welcome you back inside the Von Braun Center. Drew Blevins with you. Really good start, I think, to this game for the Fayetteville Marksman, and that goes a long, long way. But I think, once again, we're talking about the start for the Marksman and a lot of moral victories, and in, in terms of that, the Marksman have done very well in the start of their last three games. They did not give up a lot to Roanoke, they certainly batten down the hatches after the early goal from Knoxville last night, and I thought they were the better team in the first period, but it seems like the puck has to go in the net in the opening frame for the marksman. So false start off the draw. So Huntsville will bring in a new centerman, and Nukovic ties up Connor Fries, Kielczewski to the far side boards. Nick Mangold trying to hold the line at the blue line. And he could not, so this one comes right back out to the far boards. Marksman will reset here. Lane overskates the puck. Cy Nukovic is right there on him. Instead, it will be drifted back for Sam Hunter. Hunter curling with the puck back at his own blue line. Headmance as Piacentini starts out with speed. Connor O'Brien calmly plays to the far corner for Jarrett Cup. He turns it over. Piacentini now battling for it. Connor Fries and Jarrett Cup take it from him. Up the far boards, here's Tanner Nagel. His pass blocked initially. He's got the puck back, though. Nagel will give to Andrew Lane, who's forced to dump it in. So he takes a couple of cold shoulders from Jacob Barber. Now Piacentini lets it go awkwardly off the blocker of O'Brien, who just managed to knock it down. Up the near side boards, here's Drake Glover with it. Near wing, dumped in by Nukovic. Piacentini calling for it, never made it to him as Alger takes it away, and here come the marksmen. Drake Glover. Gives to the far boards. Austin Alger has it, but the linesman Jesse Burns 
says the marksmen are offside. So the faceoff will come back out to neutral ice. Derek Bame, our referee this evening, with Ben Everett and Jesse Burns on the lines. Those two worked the game last night in Knoxville. Rob Dara will face off against Austin Alger as we look to resume play. 13-10 to go first period. Huntsville holds the narrow edge in shots on goal at 4-3. It's a draw that is won by the Marksman as they'll flip it into the far side corner. Rolls along the dasher. Good at forechecking pressure by Fayetteville, but they're unable to hold the puck. This is Casey Kolcheski down the near side wing. He lost his edge. Marksman coming over to try and find the puck. They cannot. It'll be scooped up by Drake Glover. As the marksman will get it to the near side wing and Troy Murray. Murray, a cross ice pass. And that did not hit anybody. So that's going to be icing against the marksman. And a tough break. There was certainly enough traffic for that puck to ricochet off of somebody. But it does not. The faceoff will come back down to the glove hand side of Connor O'Brien. It's been interesting because I think a lot of O'Brien's personality in the league has come from his set of navy blue and green pads that he wore as a member of the Endicott College Goals team. I'm, I'm rather saddened to report that he is starting to break in a pair of ye old black and white pads and well, I love seeing the color personality of goaltenders show out there. Unfortunately, it looks like O'Brien is going to hang up the green and navy as Huntsville ices the puck here. 12-21 to go in the first period. Now, now I'll say this. Perhaps if O'Brien's able to score the win tonight, maybe he's going to keep those pads on. Draw will be taken to the blocker side of Nick Latinovich. And it is kicked around by McNair. He'll win it to Jack Patterson, who has space from the near corner. Patterson wraps around the net, trying to punch it up to the point. This puck hops up in the air as Hudgen provides all the pressure on Patterson. McNair's going to get it at the near wing, though. Matt McNair hanging on to the puck at the near side hash mark, taken by Jack Patterson, but raked free. And the Havoc are out beyond center. Gaining the red line and dumping it in before blowing out Jesse Burns, the linesman. That was Alex Kilcheski, or excuse me, rather, Dominic Procopio, begging your pardon. Near wing, this is Alex Kilcheski. He'll send to Casey Kolcheski, and that puck is blocked. We're going to do a little bit of verbal aerobics here this evening, so it would seem, between Kilcheski and Kolcheski. Huntsville Havoc will take it and dump it right back in. Far boards, Connor Fries vying against the other 19. It's Cy Nukovic. Marksman have the puck, unable to break it out cleanly. To the point, Kilcheski fires well wide as Nukovic will go chase it down the far boards. To Tyler Piacentini, the SPHL shortest player, standing at only a listed 5-4, and that might even be generous. Giving up ice to the near wing as Nick Mangol nearly slid by of Kilcheski. He's going to get some puck support, but Alex Kilcheski will calmly play to the near side boards as it's dumped in and chased behind the net. Andrew Lane clears over the stick of Nukovic. Derek Pearl now swarmed for the puck as it will be dumped into the marksman end, but Lane will find Corey Tam up the near wing. Gains the red line, and a cross ice pass intended for Alger misses. This could be a rush up ice here for Huntsville into the far corner. Bearing his head is Robbie Fisher. Turns and gives it up to the far side point. Now it's given into the middle for Hunter's bid. It's blocked off and the marksman may have numbers if they hurry. Alger instead may have to do it himself. Austin Alger, what a move. He centers in front, the one-timer. Never came cleanly off the stick of Taylor McCloy. Huntsville dodges a bullet here halfway through the first period. This is Chris Jones, the former marksman defenseman, turns the puck over on the breakout pass, and Fayetteville will work from their own blue line. Jarrett Cup spins it in. Latinovich will drop the puck behind the net. Taken here by Fayetteville is working on the puck is Connor Fries. Dug free by Taylor McCloy. 
Gives to Jared Kopp, who will sweep across to the far side boards. Calling for it, McNair spins a shot that's kicked out by Latinovich. The rebound held by Jared Kopp. He's got a seam. Kopp slides it back door. Latinovich knocked it away with the paddle. Now Renda turns, fires, blocked on the way through. That puck still loose as the marksman reach for it. Jarrett Cup, a good shift. Gives to Taylor McCloy, who walks to the middle blue line. He's going to let it go through traffic. Big rebound off the pads of Latinovich, and Jack Patterson finds it for the marksman. His centering pass is knocked away by Huntsville. Going to have it get it out. They do, just bouncing it to the red line, but Renda's got it. Pushes to the far boards, Brian Bowen. Toe drags, lets it go. His shot taken care of by Jones. But the Havoc not out of the woods yet. Hard hit on McNair, but the puck not out. Renda backhands to Troy Murray. He fans on the shot. Huntsville will take it. Rob Dara calmly waiting for reinforcements as the Havoc group was gassed. Dumped all the way behind of O'Brien. He'll stop it in the trapezoid, fed to the far corner. Brian Bowen will take it. Gives up ice, and here come the marksmen. It's Patterson. Stopped practically by the linesman, Ben Everett. It's They'll have to try to dig this one around of Derek Pearl and does, but good puck support by Casey Kolcheski, who will give to the far wing. 8.30 to go first period, still scoreless here in Huntsville, Alabama. As puck will be lifted and dumped in by Bear Gendinov, but the marksmen take it at their own blue line. With speed up the far wing, here comes Mangone. His bid goes off of a Huntsville stick and out of play with 8.20 to go in this first period. We remain knotted up 0-0 from the Vaughn Braun Center. We'll continue the action when we come back. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. We welcome you back to the BBC here in the Vaughn Braun Center. Officially, the longest name of an SPHL arena, Roto Rooter Ice at Probst Arena at the Vaughn Braun Center. Say that five times fast and we'll see you at the end of the period. 820 remains in the opening frame. 0-0, zero, zero, although the marksman had a really good chance to put the puck in the net. It just went by the wayside but I thought they put good pressure on Nick Latinovich. This one's one to the point. Walsh's bid is blocked. Nathan Hudgen took the brunt of that one, a centering pass intended for Fries. Connor Fries on the puck as he's pinned to the end wall, gets it to Mangone, who bounces it in front. It's swept off the far boards and out. I think the biggest thing now for the Fayetteville Marksman is just looking for the breakthrough. Walsh helps to push this puck up to the near wing, Tanner Nagel will dump it in off the far boards. It'll be picked up by the Havoc, skated behind of Latinovich. Alex Kielczewski in trouble, nearly turned over to Connor Fries, who almost had his first as a marksman. Taken right back behind the cage as this will be settled there by Huntsville. 7.35 remains in this opening frame, and the Havoc have really been chased back like turtles into their shells here in the first period, especially over the last five minutes. Now a chance for Drake Glover in the far corner. Glover tries to lift it. Latinovich with a good stop. Marksman still keeping control of this puck. Andrew Lane with a head fake to work around of Jacob Barber. He's dropped, and now we've got a bevy of humanity in the far corner. Lane's going to come away with this puck. Gives behind the net to Austin Alger. His centering pass taken care of, but only to the blue line as Jarrett Cup will hold it for the marksman. What a move here. Alger slides to Kyle Moore, near side circle. He's going to push to the point. Lane bounces it off the far side boards. Glover bracing for contact, drops to Alger far side boards. Piacentini pull cues it ahead, dumped right back in by Jarrett Cup. One man pressure coming here is unable to bat it out of the air was Glover, but the marksmen are going to get it back. Glover settles for McCloy. Taylor McCloy ahead of the blue line. He's got a seam, tried to tuck it. Latinovich seals and covers. <laughs> Nick Latinovich with another good sequence. As Taylor McCloy goes driving here, and I think for the marksman, the only thing that they haven't done is put the puck in the net. 
6.31 remaining in this opening period. Rob Dara will come into the face-off circle to take this one, but it's another marksman face-off win. As Matt McNair backhands it on goal. Latanovich diving, he doesn't have it! Centered, McNair unable to get the shot off, and Huntsville will survive to the near red line. Corey Tam dumps it right back in. Latinovich will settle for Alex Kielczewski. He turns it over initially, but it's kicked back out to center. Tam will dump it in. McNair going to chase the breakout pass off his skate. Rob Dara, though, will one-time it into the attack again, just alleviating pressure for Huntsville. Matt McNair onto the puck here for the marksman, south of six minutes to go in the first period, still scoreless. McNair sends it up the near glass over the stick of McCloy. Brian Bowen will go to chase. Robbie Fisher alongside of him. Bowen has the puck, tries to keep it behind the net just to await the new line getting out there. Up ice it goes. This is Jamie Bussell. We'll dump it in, and Cody Walsh will be sent spinning back to find it. 5.30 remaining in the opening frame as Walsh snaps it to the far side wing. Marksman are ahead of the attacking red line. Man gold. Shoots this one over the glove of Latinovich. It hits the end class and settled by Connor Fries. Looking to build some space. Fries drops this puck off here as Mangone will take it. Up to the far point. Now Troy Murray drives in. His wrist shot over top the net and out of play. 5.06 remains in this first period. And not a lot doing on the score sheet. Very similar to last night. No penalties called in this game by Derek Bohm, our referee. Last night was the other Derek, Derek Kalees, who was working alongside the two linesmen, Jesse Burns and Ben Everett. Draw be taken to the blocker side of Latinovich. It is won by the Havoc. The breakout is unsuccessful as Troy Murray absorbs some contact, but we've got a whistle, and that's going to be called offside. And that is going to take us to immediate timeout, I believe. I heard the horn sound, and I staff is out, and that's what's going to happen. Five minutes to go in the first period. Still scoreless in Huntsville. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy-duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Five minutes to go in the first period here in Madison County, Alabama. Faceoff is just out into neutral ice. Connor Fries will take it for the marksman against Casey Kolcheski, and Fries is going to win this as it'll be backhanded into the zone by Nick Mangold. Marksmen have applied outstanding pressure here, but Huntsville is going to be able to get this puck out. Up the far boards just flipped in as chasing it is Kolcheski. Runs into Vincenzo Renda, and the havoc Ever since the first, we'll call it 10 minutes, and that even might be generous, really haven't had a whole lot going offensively. That's Nathan Hudgen, who will pitch it behind the net to Kolcheski, and Casey Kolcheski is pinned on the end boards. That puck really not moving. Now two more players join in the fray, and finally it's Doug Free up the far boards. Taken at the far side hash mark, where Kolcheski tries to dump it far corner. Intercepted. The marksmen have it. This is Cody Walsh. Backhands to the near wing. Nick Mangone feeds it up ice, and this will be dumped in by Connor Fries. All the way into the trapezoid. Scooped up here by the Huntsville Havoc. And let the breakout begin. Far board, Cy Nukovich with his head down. Backhands to Tyler Piacentini. Top group out for Huntsville. Brian Bowen will track down the puck behind his net. Flipped up ice with speed, but not enough is McNair. It will drift back to the Havoc defensive group. 
Near boards, Tyler Piacentini <laughs> pinching low into the corner, just trying to get this puck out. He's trapped. McNair takes the puck and gives it up to the point for Brian Bowen. Bowen slides it back near wing for McNair. He uncorks one, kicked out by Latinovich. Near boards. Matt McNair on the rebound, shoveled it to the near side. Point he expected Cup to be there, but he had already gone to the middle. So O'Brien will settle for Jarrett Cup. He's double teamed and has to play it off the end wall to the trapezoid for Vincenzo Renda. Back in it up to the far wing. Brought up ice by Bowen. Excuse me, rather, it's McCloy. He lets it go over the crossbar. Matt McNair trying to settle the loose change. He does, but he bats it right to the havoc. Now McNair going to get it in a tie up at the near side corner. 2.50 to go first period as the puck is pinned in the marksman attacking zone near wing. Doug Free behind the net. This is Dominic Procopio. Flips it up ice. That was battered out of the air with a high stick. It is going to be waved by Derek Bame, our referee. Settled here by Rob Dara, who gives to Procopio. His pass, though, taken away. Marksman into the zone, but Drake Glover is ahead of the play, and he is offside with two and a half minutes remaining in this first period. Coming up during our first period intermission break, we will recap the action for you. You'll also hear from one of the Marksman alternate captains, Brian Bowen. Flipped into the attacking end by the Havoc. As Cody Walsh slams it around the far boards. He was looking for McCloy. This has got to grow legs for icing, and it will not. So Huntsville has to track back down. This is Bear Gendinov with a puck. Turning around to Austin Alger, Gendinov backhands to the near wing where it's thrown in by Rob Dar to the far corner. O'Brien sweeps to Cody Walsh here. Walsh backhands it up the near side boards. Glover bounces it up, but it's taken by Alex Kilcheski, and he'll dump it off the far boards in. Andrew Lane tracking it down to the near boards. Walsh once again. This time fumbles with the puck for a moment as it will be taken from him and dumped in by Kyle Clark. Andrew Lane finding the loose puck will give to Brian Bowen. He'll drop as this one's flipped up ice, rolling end over end. Brian Bowen will track down as he'll chase Sam Hunter. Hunter alleviates the pressure to Clark, who will now turn for Casey Kolcheski. To the far side wing, driven in by the Havoc. They're ahead of the attacking blue line. A long wrist shot is caught and held on to by Connor O'Brien. The first action he's seen in a significant amount of time. So the faceoff stays in the marksman end. Buck 17 to go in the opening frame. Marksmen have outshot the Havoc 7 to 5. And while I think Fayetteville's done a very nice job on offensive pressure, not a whole lot to show for it, especially but not limited to the scoreboard. Now a centering feed taken away by Brian Bowen. And the marksman may have a three on two rush. Given ahead to Cup as he'll one touch for Bowen, but the marksmen are offside. Detailed things, and that's what Corey Melkert has harped on time and time again. Both coaches making their respective fashion statements here this evening. Corey Melkert has opted to ditch the suit jacket this evening. He's going with the team branded pullover. Meanwhile, or meanwhile, I should say, Glenn DeTulio with the English driver's cap in the navy coloration on the Huntsville bench. Tyler Piacentini survives a check from Vincenzo Renda, but the marksman have the puck. Patterson squished here. He took that one in the numbers. This is going to be a penalty. There's going to be a lot of howling about this call. And it isn't so much the fact that Patterson was contacted. It's that that hit by Sam Hunter Hit Patterson right between the one and the three. Hunter will sit for boarding as the penalty comes 19-14 into the first period. St. Peter Pest Control power play will have their first opportunity. Previously, the Marksmen were 0 for their last 13 of the power play going into last night, 1 for 1 yesterday. Austin Alger, who has the puck, 
had the goal. Given to Brian Bowen, near face-off circle. Pushed up to the point, but bounces off the stick of Cy Nukovic, and the marksman will retreat all the way to their own end. This was a long meeting for Corey Melkert with his penalty kill, or excuse me, his power play group going into today. It's a very specific penalty kill for Huntsville. The marksmen want to attack this way. They're going to have a chance here. Centering feed, one-timer, they score! Austin Alger squares again, makes no mistake, and the marksmen get on the board first. It's a three-game goal-scoring streak for Austin Alger. And a late first period goal for the Fayetteville Marksman makes it 1-0 for the black and orange here in Huntsville. And that's just what the doctor ordered for the Marksman. Drake Glover and Brian Bowen will have the assists on the goal as the Fayetteville Marksmen were the better team in the first period, and they're going to have a marker on the board to show for it. Austin Alger, a late first period goal on the power play. The Fayetteville Marksmen lead the Huntsville Havoc 1-0 after the first period. Shots on goal for the Fayetteville Marksmen, 8 for the Huntsville Havoc, 6. That right there is a massive goal for the Fayetteville Marksmen. They've won 10 games when they've scored first. Folks, we'll be right back after these messages with our first period intermission report. We'll recap the goal, the action, and we'll also hear from Brian Bowen. This is Marksman Hockey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? <laughs> Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. 
St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Welcome back to Huntsville, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth. The Fayetteville Marksman with a late first period power play goal by Austin Alger. Have a 1-0 lead through 20 minutes of play. For Alger, it's his seventh of the season. It comes from Drake Glover and Brian Bowen. Austin Alger has got to be a candidate for the SPHL All-Rookie Team. And now he finds himself on a three-game goal-scoring streak. The Marksmen are two of two on their last two power plays. Things are clicking for this Marksman group. But I think the more important thing was the Marksmen dictated the pace of play. They did a very nice job of forcing Huntsville to play Marksman hockey instead of allowing the Havoc to get off and get their home crowd energized. Overall, this is an unbelievable period for Corey Melkert, and I don't think you could ask for anything better on the road in a hostile environment than to come out of the opening frame up one nothing, where you're out shooting your opponent. And, and really, I don't think Huntsville had a great period at all. And, and I thought that you're really starting to see the age of some of their major factors starting to show. Uh, Tyler Piacentini was arguably the biggest factor. I thought Nathan Hudgen had a pretty okay period too, but Cy Nukovic was silent. Rob Dara was unable to get anything going offensively. And then Dominic Procopio not able to lay big hits. The Marksmen really took away the Huntsville strengths and were able to turn them in to Marksman strengths. And that's a huge advantage for Corey Melkert and company as this Marksman group has a one nothing lead throughout the period. On the secondary assist of the Alger goal, Brian Bowen, as he continues to have a fantastic offensive season. He was the SPHL's leading goal scorer in 2019-2020 prior to the COVID-19 shutdown. And after notching 40 points in the ECHL last season, he finds himself back with the Fayetteville Marksman in a new role. He's been asked to be a leader. He's been asked to be a mentor while also producing at the same rate. We caught up with Brian Bowen prior to tonight's game. You'll hear his comments right after this. This is Marksman Hockey. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Have you been hurt? <coughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. 
Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high-quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. We welcome you back to Marksman Hockey. Drew Blevins joined by forward Brian Bowen. Brian, for you personally, this has been a productive season, sitting on 14 goals so far this year. The offense has once again found you naturally in the SPHL. What's been the key to unlocking your individual scoring? And when you're looking at your line mates right now, how have they been able to help you? score yeah I think that's the biggest thing I found uh, uh, me and Matt McNair have found some chemistry he does a lot of things that uh, help me out a lot and then we kind of rotate left wingers but he's really done a good job and I think uh, it's uh, in that along with our power play starting to click too and you've ridden the roller coaster with this team a six game winning streak followed by a three game losing streak Corey Melkert's done a really good job of being able to stop long losing streaks going into tonight's game what's the biggest key to be able to get able to start on time and to be able to stop the skid yeah well that kind of happens uh, this this time of the year with all sorts of guys going up and down good 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 weekends and bad weekends but it is important we're playing a really good team they're on a hot streak right now so it's kind of we just got to Play simple. We gave uh, we had a lot of mistakes yesterday. I think we probably outplayed them, but we we gave them too much. So we just have to limit it. These guys, they're they have a lot of good players that can attack off the rush. So we probably have to limit that and then win the special teams battle. I want to talk to you a little bit about what life is like here in the SPHL right now. Four out of the next six weekends are three games in three days. Two of those required require excuse me travel to multiple destinations. How do you prepare the body to go through that, and how do you get in a good routine to stay healthy and be able to stay ready for a good effort night in, night out? I, I actually don't mind the three and threes. I um, practice less, games more. I like to play the game, so I personally don't mind. I'm, I, I usually like, I like the back ends when guys are tired and you know, if you're prepared, you can take advantage of that. Take me into the locker room. What's the mindset like right now, and how is it starting to amp up before tonight's game? Yeah, I, th I think the guys know how important uh, this weekend is uh, against Huntsville uh, to stop the bleeding. And, you know, the, the standings are all jumbled up there from, like, what is it, like three to, three to nine. It's all jumbled up, so every game is really important, and every, I think everyone knows that. Last one for you. I always ask Corey Melkert if there's a, a saying or a theme that he's focusing on going into the game. For you personally, for you as a group, what is that saying or theme that is going to kind of carry the motivation going into the weekend? I think I, I already touched on it. I just think we can't really feed into their transition. We like we, we, we gave we gave too many chances yesterday, and, and that's we have to limit if uh, that tra the transition today. Brian, thanks for your time. Yep. That's forward Brian Bowen of the Fayetteville Marksman. We'll be right back with more Marksman Hockey right after these messages. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new Signature Sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> 
but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Welcome you back to Huntsville, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth. The Fayetteville Marksman leading the Huntsville Havoc 1-0 on Austin Alger's seventh goal of the season. A power play marker scored 19-44 into the first period. Let's go ahead and go for a quick spin around the SPHL. Full Friday night of action. We'll start things off with the first place Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs who have just taken a two-goal lead over the Birmingham Bulls. It's 4-2 at Berglund Center. 17 minutes left in that one. The Vermilion County Bobcats hosting the Evansville Thunderbolts. It's not a good start for the home team. A 2-0 lead for Evansville as they near the midway point of the second period. Through one, Pensacola has a 1-0 lead over Macon at the hangar. And then the big one, rivalry night in Quad City, and it's not pretty. The Peoria Rivermen have a 4-0 lead on the storm. That game has just ended the first period. Here we've got a fantastic hockey game brewing. Second period puck drop follows these messages. This is Marksman Hockey. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Marksman! Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, 
or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Welcome back to Huntsville, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you. I have to share this story with you because I think it's one of my favorite interactions. As you all know, traveling with the team, you get to go on different adventures, and the Huntsville Water Walk is quite literally right behind us out the back door. And as we were walking along last season, which was a game in late March, we were walking, and there are so many Asian carp that swim along that water walk. And I happen to see a very unique one, a mirror carp, which is specifically bred to have no scales that make, makes it easier to prepare for the dinner table. All carp are invasive species. They're natively Asian that have been brought over here over years and years of exploration and, and, uh, and immigration. And Corey Melkert looks at me and he goes, how do you know that's a mirror carp? And I told him I know it's a mirror carp because it doesn't have scales all the way on the other side. And every time we take a stroll down the river walk from the team hotel and into the building, he goes, hey, Drew, did you happen to see a mirror carp? And of course, I shook my head, but we'll be on the lookout. And I can guarantee you that if we see that special fish again on this trip, it'll be all over Marksman social media. But just the interactions that you have and the strange memories that you'll make in SPHL hockey, and that will be one to stick with me for a while as we both get to learn a little bit about biology here and the fish ecosystem in Huntsville. Marks would have a 1-0 lead. This is Tanner Nagel, zips it in front. A quick snap, Brister caught by Latinovich as he robs Connor Fry, still looking for that all-important first goal as a Fayetteville Marksman, 19-11 to go in this second period. Face-off will go to the blocker side of Latinovich. Critical first five minutes of this period, I think, for the Huntsville Havoc as they've got to break the pressure the marksmen have put on them. It's a draw one to Jarrett Cup as he hammers one off the end boards. Picked up by Matt McNair as he'll circle to the near side wing. McNair hanging on to the puck as he turns. Let's a wrist shot go. Latinovich wanted to put that out of play. He couldn't. Brian Bowen fighting for the loose puck near side hash marks. Wins it to Matt McNair, who will backhand it behind the net. Taken here by the Huntsville Havoc in the form of Sam Hunter. He'll find Nukovic as it'll quickly be turned back for Chris Jones. Jones steps into a long wrist shot. This is the third team Jones has suited up for this season. Hammered toward the net. This will be settled. He's working around the near side wing. This will just be dropped to the near corner. Hard hit delivered here by Cup. This cup will dig it loose. Huntsville struggling to get anything to the net front. This puck taken by Brian Bowen. Out it goes as it'll be chased down here by Hudgen as he'll turn the near side wing looking for Jacob Barber who will dump it in. And a new group coming out for the Huntsville Havoc. Two minutes gone by here in this second period. The near wing is Taylor McCloy. His break-in pass taken away, and now Jacob Barber has speed up the far wing. Barber pulls the trigger, caught by O'Brien. He lets it go, I believe inadvertently, as Procopio will hold the line. To the far side boards, spinning with it here, Bear Gendinov. Hanging on to the puck, shoots it off the near side wing as this will be raked all the way around the far side boards. Begging your pardon, that was Austin Martinson who hammered it in, and I apologize I would have thought these uniforms would have been a little bit easier to read. It is a light blue number on a black field, but it's proving a little more challenging than I had initially thought, and I do apologize for that. Far corner is Alex Kielczewski. Hard hit delivered there. Merciful heavens, that was a collision. As Connor Fries rocks his man, and we've got a whistle for an offside at the far blue line. 17.08 to go in the second period. Draw taking place right in front of the marksman bench. Connor Fries, normally not known as the guy who's going to lay you out, but that was that was an impressive hit. Face off one by the Havoc. 
They'll send it off the near boards. Looking to dump it in was Robbie Fisher. Instead, this will be Alex Kilcheski, who heads all the way back behind of Latinovic. Up the near side boards. This is deflected ahead and a breakaway chance for Gendidov. He scores. Huntsville ties the game on the puck deflected ahead. And it's 1-1. Time of this goal will be 3.09 into the second period. And that's just a tip your cap, unreal move. Huntsville will knot this one up. An even strength marker. As we told you how the Marksman had a really good start to the first period. I don't think this necessarily negates their start to the second, but that's a bitter pill to swallow. Dumped in behind O'Brien. Bear Gendinov will have his sixth of the season. Up the near side boards. Nathan Hudgen will have an assist along with Casey Kolcheski. O'Brien under siege now, just as Latinovich was at the end of the first. Havoc, rake it into the high slot. Nobody home for that, so the reset on the near side boards. Puck taken away, Brian Bowen has it. Up the far wing he goes, Bowen dumps it in. Patterson may have gotten a piece of it. He was offside, so no, he did not. Patterson's gonna get off on a line change here. That will allow Huntsville to get their group on as well. One man pressure from Austin Alger. This is going to force a bad pass. Vincenzo Renda smacks it right back into the attacking end, Rob Dara. Dropping it here. So it'll be skated ahead by Chris Jones. He's going to send behind of him for Kyle Clark, who gives across for Procopio. He overskates the puck for Dara to take it. Dumps it behind the net. It'll be settled by Austin Martinson. And this was the group that got the Rush going and allowed Gendinoff to get the goal. Headman, look, it's just under the stick of Austin Alger. He was off to the races if he had been able to catch it cleanly. This is a turnover as Renda has the puck on his backhand. Renda dumps it in around the kick play. Austin Alger awaits it near wing. Alger's got it. Loses the puck in the double team, though. Austin Martinson will dump it in for the Havoc. Kyle Clark going to chase. He's got his arm around the neck of Andrew Lane. Two by two, they battle. Media timeout coming up at the next whistle. Shots on goal, dead even 10-10. Lane really being worked on here, and finally he's let go as the puck jostles free to McCloy. His pass up pipes for Fries. Hit a stick, Derek Pearl will take it for the Havoc. Into the near corner, nearly a dangerous turnover as Mangon was lurking in front. Marksman pressuring the puck here on the near side half wall. Battling up ice, Martinson puts it right into the skates of the goal scorer, Gendinov. As back to retrieve it will be Jarrett Cup for the Marksman. Starts the breakout to the near wing, Andrew Lane. Edmans the puck for Tanner Nagel. It's off of his stick. Alex Kilcheski, the first one here for the Havoc. To the far boards, 14 minutes to go. Second period, 1 1 the score. Dumped into the near side corner. Jarrett Cup run into the near corner. Puck centered, but taken away by Cody Walsh. Marksman have numbers. Mangone hanging on to it at the far wing. The Marksmen are offside. And now Casey Kolcheski giving a couple of shoves to Mangone. Didn't like that the shot made its way toward the net. And this is going to be a larger kerfuffle than anyone had initially imagined. Everyone will skate away, 13.50 to go in the second period. Bear Gendinov ties the game, 1-1. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. 
the new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Look. Good crowd on hand tonight at the Vaughn Braun Center, as it typically is here in Huntsville, Alabama. Drew Blevins with you in the broadcast booth. 1-1 the score between the Marksman and the Havoc. Austin Alger scoring for the Marksman. Bear Gendinov for Huntsville. Middle game of a Ville versus Ville versus Ville weekend. Fayetteville lost to Knoxville last night, trying to snap the losing skit against Huntsville here this evening. And just to wrap that up for you, Evansville in the lead over Vermilion County to this point. Backhanded up ice where it'll be settled at the center ice faceoff circle and dumped in. Connor O'Brien stops it for Vincenzo Renda. The far boards it goes. Jack Patterson will give it back where it will be settled here by Renda. A head fake one way. He'll slide to the near side boards. Nobody home for the pass. So dumped right back in. This is out of play. That faceoff should come back out to neutral ice. 13.05 remaining in the middle stanza. For the Marksman, 10, 2, and 1 when scoring first this season. Prior to last weekend, they were 10, 1, and 1 when scoring first. Something is going to have to break here in this game from a pattern perspective. Either the Marksmen are going to keep this going or has, suffer a rare loss when they lead at the end of the first period. It's been so strange to look at the pattern of this marksman team, and normally you'll get a few little nuggets of information, but this has been almost predictable. Latinovich had the puck taken away from him, a centering pass. Knocked away, Latinovich wanted a penalty as he lost his goal stick on the play, and none would have been given there. Puck raked away at the far side hash marks. Drake Glover chips it in. That stick came up high, and there's a delayed penalty. As Taylor McCloy is stung. He's going to stay in the play here. Six on five advantage for the marksman on the delayed call. McCloy to the far corner now. Working his way out is Brian Bowen. Rotates to the point. Bowen holding onto the puck with speed, circling. His centering feed makes it to McCloy. He shoots. He scores! Taylor McCloy takes the high stick in stride and scores from the far circle to make it 2-1 Marksman. What a connection that is. Brian Bowen finds Taylor McCloy and the Marksman regain the lead, a goal 8-57. Into this second period. And just a massive, massive goal for Taylor McCloy. This will be his eighth of the year. And Derek Bame having to relay, scored on a delayed penalty. So we will stay five on five. That penalty will not be served because the goal was scored off of the delay. Cody Walsh in the far corner. That's a collision. Marksman will have the puck as trying just to pull cue it ahead is Troy Murray. He loses it. Rob Dara, a challenging shot at the near post and a good stop by Connor O'Brien. Marksman will have it heading the other direction. Mangold chips it to the near side wing. This will roll around to the far corner for Kyle Moore to go by for the puck. Moore. Digs it free, Mangone centering pass is intercepted. And the Havoc are out ahead of center as Cody Walsh took the worst of that collision. Behind the net, meanwhile, Rob Darrow with the puck to the far point. Walking a wrist shot through traffic, misses at the far post. Walsh smacks it around the near boards. It will be held by Dominic Procopio. The near side corner, just a one touch behind the net by Nathan Hudgen. Marksman take it all the way down it goes. This will be icing. So we're 54 seconds away from the halfway point of this second period. Up. 
Faceoff comes back down to the near circle and Connor O'Brien's end. And it is a draw that is won by Huntsville. Snappers are by Robbie Fisher, misses. Mangone has the loose puck. He's roughed up but is going to battle ahead with it before it's taken from him at the attacking blue line. So Wall snaps a pass that is intercepted. Huntsville may have an opportunity here. Driven in front of backhander, cut down by O'Brien. Rebound scooped up by the Havoc. Kilcheski squares up, shoots, blocked by Patterson, pitches it off the far boards. Kilcheski holds. Far wing is Nathan Hutchin. Hutchin centering, looking for Casey Kilcheski. Taken away, Matt McNair now battles and gets that ahead of the blue line, so everyone has to touch up. New group coming on. Here's Bear Gendinov, the Huntsville goal scorer. Dumps it to the far corner for Jacob Barber. He survives a collision. As the marksman try to break it out up the near side boards. McNair pool queuing at the puck, could not get it out. Troy Murray scoops it up. Headmans for Bowen, who got a piece of it, no icing. Now Bowen will chase. Huntsville to it first, Sinukovic. Drop it back and call for the puck at the near red line. Nukovic enters the attacking end. He'll drop for Chris Jones. A wrist shot, tipped and eventually blocked by his own man, who is Piacentini in front. Vincenzo Renda onto it, trying to clear the zone. Unsuccessful up the far boards, alleviates pressure to Cup. He'll send to Taylor McCloy, who right now has the difference making goal. He'll head man to Austin Alger. Alger curls, gives to McCloy, tied up in his skates, has support here. Renda drops it back to center, intercepted, and this may be another odd man rush. On his horse is Barber, cut off by Jarrett Cup here. Cup. Finds his man at the far side boards as it's knocked ahead by Glover, but not with possession, so the Havoc will regain control. Nine minutes left in the second period. 2-1 marksman. Here's Chris Jones. Fakes the shot. Will drop for a long bit from Buchel. It was nowhere near the net front. Now Austin Martinson gives to the far wing. Huntsville. Walks it below the goal line, squaring is Martinson. Instead, push to the point. Procopio, now fired, a long bid. O'Brien scrambling, made a couple of saves there. Jarrett Cup will get this out. Cup, with speed up the near boards, delivers a cold shoulder right to the chops of Bussell. Up the far wing. This will head back out. Troy Murray kicks it to his forehand. Will leave for Andrew Lane. Lane right by the bench side boards, now cuts to the near wing. Andrew Lane carrying it in himself, fires a wrist shot, caught and held onto by Latinovich, and that'll take us to a timeout. 8-11 remaining in the second period of this one. 2-1 marksman off of Taylor McCloy's goal. at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Eleven to go second period here. As you see a box stacking game going on in the ice. And the poor gentleman on the far side boards, the bench side boards, uh, he's having himself a tie. <laughs> that would be me moving about. <laughs> All fun and games here for the Fayetteville Marksman right now, too. A 2 1 lead. 8-11 to go in the second period. Game played in the shadow of the Saturn V5 Rockets. You can see that spire obelisk shape all throughout town. Of course, the Saturn V5, part of the Apollo missions that put man on the moon. The United States won the space race. This is a town that is very proud of its history with the intergalactic. Face off to the glove side of Nick Latinovich. And this is a howitzer that is blocked. Troy Murray is going to hold the line. Near side boards, Matt McNair pressured from behind. He's got Jack Patterson trying to dig this one free. Patterson spins away from contact, is now McNair 
is in a shoving match for the puck. Marksman are still going to hold the line here somehow. Bowen gives to Murray. He's got it back. Far wing McNair fires it. Blocked. It's a Huntsville defense that has taken away a few shooting lanes late. Redshirt a few blocked shots as a result. Brian Bowen still battling for it. It'll come screaming out to the far side wing. McNair cuts free as he works against Derek Pearl. It's won by the Havoc to the near boards. Headmanned. This one's dumped in off of Nathan Hudgen as Glover came together with Procopio. A headman pass. It's Austin Alger settling the puck at his backhand. He scores! Oh, baby! Austin Alger! 3-1 marksman! He nearly had a breakaway chance earlier in the period. This time he gets it. Settles the puck and goes upstairs on Nick Latinovich. Austin Alger, his second of the game, his eighth of the season. And it's a massive one for the Fayetteville Marksman to put them up a pair. Time of the goal will be 12.47 into the second period. Austin Alger having himself a handful of games here, a three-game goal-scoring streak has now just become four in three for the rookie forward out of Livonia, Michigan. Corey Melkert has heralded the play of his rookie forward. And you see just how dangerous Austin Alger can be when he gets in space and has the ability to shoot the puck. <laughs> Flipped all the way down the length of the rink. It will reach the goal line just as icing is waved, so Walsh absorbs contact from Barber. Meanwhile, Piacentini going against Drake Glover. Far corner now. Fries with a hard takedown. This is going to be a penalty. We'll see what Derek Bame is going to signal here on just the game's second penalty call. Fries is going to have a legitimate gripe there. He didn't board him because it wasn't close enough to the boards, but that's what Derek Bame is going to call. Tough one to swallow for the marksman here late in the second period. Penalty comes 13-25 into the frame. Fries for boarding, and the marksman penalty kill will be called upon for the first time in this game. Far side boards, Huntsville holding on to it at the hash mark. Havoc power play has been decent this season, operating at exactly 20%. Here's Kilcheski, rebound scores. Tyler Piacentini at the near side post will bring his team within one on the power play marker. <laughs> and you're going to get a great look on this replay right here. There's the shot. Piacentini, the unmarked man. Boom. Time of the goal will be 13.38 into the period. It only took 13 seconds on the power play for Huntsville to draw within one. To the far side boards, icing against the Havoc. Faceoff comes back down to Latinovich's end. So the draw will make its way to the blocker side of Latinovich. For those of you keeping score long at home, Sinukovic will have a secondary assist. As Huntsville driving up the far boards, now the marksmen have to keep in mind what has happened in the last two games. They have given up a goal in the last two minutes. Yesterday, it was the go-ahead goal that became the game winner to Jagger Williamson as Latinovich will scoop this one under his glove and cover here. Last Saturday, it was C.J. Stubbs with seven seconds remaining on Operation Sellout Night 
to tie the game for the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs. Fresh lines, both sides. Glover with McCloy and Alger to take the draw for the Marksman. This is a turnover by Lane and a breakaway chance up the far side wing. Long wrist shot, big rebound, and a hard collision on the inboards. Look out. Marksman have the puck, and this is not good. Fans are going to howl about this one. And now Austin Alger is going to be under siege, and this is going to get ugly. It's Austin Martinson who is down in the near side corner. And the only way a penalty could be called here is if Derek Bain believes that there was a major infraction. And it looked to me as if both players got their feet tangled up and Martinson went into the boards first. Crowd of over 5,000 on hand, all wanting a penalty for Alger. We'll see what Derek Baim says. Meanwhile, Kyle Sherrill, the trainer for the Fayetteville Marksman, coming to have a look at Martinson. He'll assist Jason Lopez, the trainer for the Huntsville Havoc. This is great sportsmanship. Over 1,100 games worked between the two trainers here this evening. And a great sign as Martinson is going to be able to stand upright and get off. But he is being helped by Rob Dara and Jason Lopez, the trainer. And now the question becomes, what is the verdict on Austin Alger? Jesse Burns was the nearest linesman. And he's relaying with Derek Bame what will happen here. So that was altogether strange as I just saw the off-ice officials crew hold up a statistics sheet so that the officials could see it. And now Ben Everett called over. Derek Bame will talk it over with Tyler Piacentini and Taylor McCloy. <laughs> Looking in my binoculars here, both players rather stoic. <laughs> Face-off is coming back down to the end of Connor O'Brien. Nobody's gone to the box yet. Derek Bain comes over to Corey Melker. They're going to call a penalty here. And Corey Melker is going to go nuts. And he's got a legitimate gripe here. And you feel as sorry as you can for Austin Martinson. But that's not a penalty because there was no body check late. Tyler Piacentini skates back with Derek Bame. Austin Alger is going to be thrown out of this hockey game. Are you kidding me? That is egregious. And that would also signal to me this might very well be a major penalty. And Kyle Moore is going to serve it. That is just a usurpation of the rule book, and that's a shame. Five thirty-one to go in this second period. Highlight this moment. 
penalty has not been put on the clock yet. Now keep in mind, if you're watching along at home, Derek Bame was on the other side of the ice. Jesse Burns, who rivals Tyler Piacentini in stature, was the nearest linesman in that corner. He's the one who was consulted to make that call. And the only reason that he is able to make that call, if I properly understand, is if that's a major penalty. Austin Alger has been sent to the locker room, scored a pair of goals, will be ejected from this game, and it is a five-minute major. That's the only way the call can be made after consultation. And that is awful, absolutely awful. Marksman will be on the penalty kill here for all intents and purposes to end the period. And Derek Bain has gifted the Huntsville Havoc an opportunity to tie this game here in their home barn. And I'll, I'll preface all of this by saying I will watch the replay coming up at the intermission break. But those two players got their feet tangled together and Austin Martinson unfortunately took a nasty fall. It's a game played at high speed and you wish all the best to Martinson but man, that is a really, really tough call to make there. A centering pass scooped up by the marksman. They're out and Drake Glover drives one on one. He may have a chance to shoot this puck. Fires and a good stop by Latinovich. <laughs> Doubly as unfortunate in this case is now that major penalty goes back to the league office in Huntersville for review. And I think it's going to be very, very difficult to tack on any additional time for Austin Alger based on time of game and based on the fact that it really wasn't a penalty. 4.33 to go in this second period. 4.02 to go in the major. Keep in mind that major penalty will also carry with it the Alamo scoring. All majors have to time out. <laughs> Face-off will be in Nick Latinovich's end. Matt McNair and Taylor McCloy, both out of Adrian College, collegiate teammates, the both of them the penalty killing forwards with Cody Walsh and Andrew Lane on defense for the black and orange. I thought Corey Melkert was gonna leap out of his skin there for a moment. He certainly is one of the more animated characters but I think any coach when pushed is. Jacob Barber, smothered by Cody Walsh. Puck rips around to the far boards. This is Nathan Hudgen with it. Hudgen to the near wing for Barber. Met stick to stick by McCloy. Walsh <laughs> cues it ahead. Barber got in the way. Now a chance for Casey Kolcheski. Around the far boards, Nathan Hudgen has an assist in this game. Far side point where it'll be played to Barber and back. Held here by Derek Pearl. And now Jacob Barber, curls to Pearl. He's gonna let it go from distance and hit the crossbar. Fluttered in. Connor O'Brien bailed out by the heavy metal. Behind the net, this is Casey Kolcheski. Near side boards, Jacob Barber hanging on to it. Turns to the point. Pearl now, squares around to the far faceoff circle. This drive is blocked on the way through. 3.25 to go, second period. 2.53 to go in the major penalty to Alger. Derek Pearl. Hanging on to it, finds Barber. He kicks it down to the near side wing and gets it back. Barber trading places to Derek Pearl now. Robbie Fisher squared up on the near side wing, or excuse me, rather, it's Bucell. Bucell shot tipped on the way through. Great stop, O'Brien! On the rebound chance from Barber, out it goes. 2.55 to go in this second period. 3-2 marksman trying to ward off 
This major power play for Huntsville. 2.15 left in the major. Bussell will dump it all the way around the board to the far wing. Here's Tyler Piacentini with the puck. Already has a goal. Squares to Cy Nukovic. Near side hash mark. Nukovic walking into the near corner. Gives it up to the point. It's a bad pass and a free clear and a foot race. Nick Mangone shot out of a cannon. He'll be right behind of Alex Kilcheski. Pushed up to Piacentini. Chugging his legs, he's got the puck down the far boards. Turns at the far side corner. Accosted there by Jarrett Cup. Passes around the kick plate to Kilcheski. He'll step forward with it. Behind the net, Piacentini. Met stick to stick, taken away here and cleared by the marksman. This is actually going to be on net, so Latinovic is forced to play it out. Minute and 30 seconds to go on the major penalty to Austin Alger. That unfortunately has ended his evening. 105 seconds to go here in this second period. Near side wing. Driving in with it is Cy Nukovic. Behind the net he goes. Nukovic feeds the far wing up to the point. Now a one-timer. It's a screwball that never made it to the net. That thing was oscillating in 15 different directions like a gyroscope. The reset in the zone entry by Rob Dara. Dara will feed the far side wing and call for it back. Instead, it goes to Derek Pearl. Pearl sets up Dara. He fires. Great stop, O'Brien. No rebound. 45 seconds to go in the major. A minute 16 to go in the second period. Connor O'Brien, a good stop there. Draw comes back to the blocker side of O'Brien. Biggest part of that for the marksman is fresh legs in the long change period. Marksman just really want to finish this one off. Huntsville holds behind the net to the far point, and now Jacob Barber turns and gives to the middle for Pearl. Calls for it, his one-timer hammered on net. O'Brien makes the save with Sayanukovic sitting in his lap. Exactly a minute to go in a second period, 29 seconds until Kyle Moore, serving Austin Alger's major, will exit the box. It's a face-off won by the marksman, but they are double teamed off of it. And now it's a harpooning match to try to get the puck free. One by the Havoc, Casey Kolcheski sends it up to the point. Great pressure by McCloy here, but Barber steps in. Jacob Barber, fans on the shot. Now he centers to the far face-off circle. Shot never came off a stick. Barber in front. McCloy's got it, and it is cleared. And that is going to do it for the major penalty. The Huntsville Havoc had a gift wrap chance and blew it. 26 seconds to go in this second period. Up the far boards it goes. A foot race. Vincenzo Renda has the puck, breaks it out up the near side boards beyond Matt McNair. This is hammered into the attacking end by Chris Jones. He's got to get back. Flipped end over end. Jones in the goaltender's butterfly position stopped the puck, but it's cleared down the rest of the length of the ice by Drake Glover. Five seconds to go on the period. Maybe time for one last shot for Huntsville. Bear Gendinov with a second, and that is where the period will come to a close. The Fayetteville Marksmen have a 3-2 lead at the end of the second period. Shots on goal in the middle frame for the Fayetteville Marksman, seven, and a game total of 15 for the Huntsville Havoc, 13, and a game total of 19. On the scoreboard, the Marksmen get contributions from their captain, Taylor McCloy, and Austin Alger's second of the game. And there is a lot of milling about here and discussion with officials as both teams head back to the locker room. Understandable and legitimate frustration on behalf of the marksmen. But they've got the lead through 40 minutes. We'll recap the period when we come back. This is Marksman Hockey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. 
Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light Legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high-quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Archman! Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Welcome you back inside the broadcast booth of the VBC here in Huntsville, Alabama. Drew Blevins with you. Fayetteville Marksman have a 3-2 lead through the end of the second period. 
But for the marksman, certainly the offense was nice. But it is a bittersweet taste in the mouth of the Fayetteville marksman right now because of the penalty that was taken by Austin Alger at the end of the frame. We'll start with what the marksman offense did well. Uh, Bear Gendidov brought the havoc into a 1-1 game with his breakaway goal, 3:09 of the period. Gendinoff with his sixth of the season. The Marksmen, though, take less than five minutes to respond. It's Taylor McCloy on a feed from Brian Bowen on a delayed penalty. He puts the puck in the back of the net. That makes it 2-1. The Marksmen keep it going. Austin Alger capitalizes on a breakaway for his eighth of the season, his second of the game. But the Marksmen would hemorrhage it right back with Tyler Piacentini scoring his 15th of the year on the power play, set up by a Connor Fry's boarding. It only took 13 seconds into the power play for the Havoc to get the job done. And then the controversy. Austin Alger ejected from the game. It has been called hooking. And here's and, and yes, Austin Alger got his stick parallel up in the midsection of Austin Martinson. Martinson lost his balance at the goal crease and then his momentum on a, on a rush up the ice carried him into the end boards. And credit where credit is due to Derek Bain. If you feel like you've got to call that hooking penalty, call the hooking, but have your arm up when the infraction happens because you can count out one and a half seconds before Martinson hits the boards and Bain never had his arm up for the initial hooking call. It all comes off of Jesse Burns' recollection as the nearest linesman, and the only way that Burns can call that penalty through BAME is if it's a major. So Austin Alger ejected from the game, 10-minute misconduct to go along with a five-minute major for hooking. Look up the last time you saw that. And it's just, it's a poor, poor, poor interpretation of the rule book, and it's a call that completely lacks feel. And the SPHL, has really struggled this year with its on-ice officials, and that one is one of the reasons why. It's because you're calling the result and not the infraction. If it's a boarding, if there's arm extension, and if it happens below the goal line, yes, that's a major penalty. It causes an injury. We have not seen Austin Martinson since, and you feel for a guy who takes a hard fall in that case. Unfortunately, that's just not a major penalty for hooking. It's a normal hooking infraction that you're then tacking on because of the result. And that's where the biggest problem is, and Corey Melkert has every right to be upset about it. I do think Derek Bame does a nice job of letting Melkert speak his piece without getting upset because it's a difficult call to make one way or the other, but certainly the 5,000 plus here at the VBC play a role in getting that major penalty called. And the good news for the Fayetteville Marksman is nothing comes of it. So the Marksmen have themselves in a very nice position in this hockey game. They are a perfect 14-0 when they lead after the third or after the second period. And now a chance to advance, to break the losing skid, and to do what the marksmen do best, and that's close down games, regardless of whether at home or on the road. And this is where for Corey Melkert, he's got to have this team rocked and ready to go. And we'll see if they are up to the challenge going into the third period here in a hostile environment with a big crowd. As it stands, through 40 minutes of regulation play, the Fayetteville Marksman 3, the Huntsville Havoc 2. We'll be right back with our Ask the Voice question right after these messages. This is Marksman Hockey. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. 
the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. Kelly, Kelly, you need to unmute yourself. For some, it's just the sound of ice hitting heavy duty plastic. But for us, it's the signal calling us back to the light. And to Greg's house, because he just got a new grill. Connecting to Hot Jam's playlist. Welcome back, Bud Light legends. It's time to take summer by the coolers. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finance options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. Consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Something big is coming. Something so big, it'll change the world of chicken sandwiches. Zaxby's new signature sandwich with Zax sauce or new spicy Zax sauce because the chicken sandwich war ain't over yet. The new signature sandwich. All the other little sandwiches can run along. We'll take it from here. Look at our yard. So many anthills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Webb Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Archman! We welcome you back inside the Vaughn Braun Center. Drew Blevins with you in the broadcast booth. Time to turn your attention to tonight's Ask the Voice question. Tonight's question <laughs> comes from Phil, who is listening along in Maxton, North Carolina. Hi, Phil. Hope things are nice over there in Robinson County. Phil wants to know, what has been your favorite non-hockey memory with the Fayetteville Marks? This is a great question because... I think whenever you watch sports, it's so easy to put each and every one of these athletes into the box of being an athlete, and that's the only frame of mind that you see them through. And the fact is, every single one of these gentlemen who play for the Fayetteville Marksmen are great guys. They're filled with personality, all sorts of different interests. It's just such a pleasure and a joy to be able to get to know all of them. For me, knowing that my favorite hobby is fishing, it was last season in Pensacola where it was a tough road trip to Pensacola, to Huntsville. Instead of coming back to Fayetteville, the marksmen stayed in practice in Pensacola. And the Monday after going two for three on the weekend against the Ice Flyers, myself, the assistant coach at the time, Jason Binkley, the team trainer, Kyle Sherrill, and then defenseman Don Oliveri all got up early in the morning at sunrise to be on the Pensacola Beach Fishing Pier as we were reeling in Spanish mackerel after Spanish mackerel. And those are the awesome memories. But I also think that what is discounted is the fact that sometimes it's just the pregame meal and the conversation you have or the things that you might see on the side of the road out of the bus window, things that you'll never forget. And those are the memories that I think these guys carry with them more so than any individual hockey game. And it goes a long way because at the end of every career, you go back and you talk to a retired athlete, and what is it that they miss the most? It's very rarely playing the game and putting your body through the toil. It's very rarely 
waking up to get to practice every day. It's always about the boys and being around the group. And I think for me to, to encapsulate it overall, that's my favorite marksman memory. So thank you to Phil and Maxton for his question tonight. If you want to have one of your questions answered on a future edition of Ask the Voice, all you have to do is email me, dblevins, that's D-B-L-E-V-I-N-S at marksmanhockey.com with your name, where you're listening from, and a good question about hockey or the marksman organization. Go around the SPHL with some final scores next. Hills everywhere. Did you know that a single ant can live to be 29 years old? Really? Well, what about a married one? Seriously? <laughs> but really, uh, we need to fix the yard. St. Peter Pest Control handles all your mosquitoes, ants, spiders, cockroaches, and even rodents. St. Peter Pest Control provides full home pest protection and consistent treatment of ants and mosquitoes in your yard, too. At St. Peter Pest Control, we send all your bugs to see St. Peter. Web Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Irishman! Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. The goal of the Fayetteville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization is to develop plans that will provide the safest and most efficient transportation while protecting and enhancing the environment. On your way to your next Marksman game, remember, you can walk, carpool, or use the FAST app to track transit system buses. Marky travels green, and you should too, with FAMPO. Let's go for a quick spin around the SPHL. This one is final. The Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs 5, the Birmingham Bulls 2. Roanoke, for the time being, will hold on to their number one slot. They'll be in sole possession for about the next 30 minutes. Peoria has opened up a can of offense in Quad City tonight. 5-0, the Rivermen lead the storm. Evansville and Vermilion County locked in a really good battle. The Bobcats have battled all the way back. It's a 3-3 tie between those two at the Palmer Arena, and Pensacola has a 4-2 lead on Macon. The Fayetteville Marksmen look to make it a perfect 15-0 when leading at the end of the second period. We'll see if they can lock it down and keep the Rockets grounded. Next. Hey. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. Welcome you back to Huntsville, Alabama. Drew Blevins alongside you in the broadcast booth. The Fayetteville Marksman 3, the Huntsville Havoc 2. Mrs. Zamboni was late 
getting off the ice, so we're going to have to do a little bit of penalty killing on our own here to start the third period. And this is a big period for Fayetteville. I would argue the biggest period of the season up to this point. They're going to start with a lead and try to lock it down. We're going to learn a lot about the medal of this team as they take on a very good offensively minded Glenn DiTullio coach team. And the Marksmen have been through challenges and challenges throughout the course of the season. It's been like reading the story of Odysseus where you've got to shoot the arrow through the targets and you've got to face the sirens and then you've got to face Polyphemus, the Cyclops, and just what comes next. And for the Marksmen, it was a roster that wasn't built to Corey Melkert's liking early on and all the trades that had to be made and then dealing with a couple of guys taking their leave of the game and going into the real world to work outside of sports and dealing with the loss of players like that. And then you get the call up for Brent Moran and having to find a rookie goaltender in Connor O'Brien that's going to put you in an opportunity to win the game that he plays in. And despite all the challenges, Corey Melkert has navigated these waters tremendously. The marksmen are in playoff position, trying to snap this three game losing skid here this evening. The ice is dry enough that we are ready to start play in this third period. The puck is dropped and away we go. And you're going to go, yes, Drew, if the Huntsville Havoc score the next goal. It's a tie game, and obviously that's massive, but I really, really think the next game, uh, the next goal scored in this game is going to win it. And that's the team that's going to be successful. That's an awkward bounce off of Latinovich. So that puck squirted to his net front. Nobody within the same area code. So Kilcheski will come out. Now here's one for you, and I apologize for missing this. The Marksmen are shorthanded to start this period as there was a verbal abuse of official penalty given at the end of the frame. And it, it looked to me as this one's to the back toward Piacentini. Fanned on it. He had an open net and missed. Oh, boy. Circle that moment. That is a huge miscue for Tyler Piacentini looking for his second. It is Kyle Moore who is serving the verbal abuse of official. The way it has been put in is it has been assigned to player double zero. That signals to me that came from the bench. And I cannot speculate as to who said it, but that's a bench minor. So the power play resumes to the back door again, and O'Brien with help from his defense to keep it out. Marksman are ahead of the attacking blue line. Here's McCloy with a toe drag, gets through his man, and will dump behind the net to Matt McNair to kill some time. McNair in a shoving match here against Derek Pearl. As Huntsville will bring it up ice. This is Rob Dara. Taken by Kolcheski, feeds the point. This is hammered off a of marksman stick and halfway up the protective screen. Just five seconds left of the power play for Huntsville. They have executed once on it today. But not a lot going here. So the draw to the far side circle in the marksman end. Fayetteville wins it, and that will effectively kill the penalty. So Kyle Moore standing in the box. He is out. He will quickly track over to the marksman bench and get off on a change as Brian Bowen relieves him. Dumped in behind the cage, Connor O'Brien. Set it up for Cody Walsh, big body defenseman that the marksman signed earlier this week. Walsh turns it over. Here's a long wrister just wide of the far post. A nearly disastrous turnover. Marksman survive out to the red line. This is where Corey Melkert talks about finishing the game full 60 minutes. McNair chips it up the far kick plate all the way out. That must have ricocheted off of a Huntsville player. It's no icing. Havoc back into the attacking end, but Troy Murray We'll win it to Andrew Lane on the far boards. His breakout pass cut out of midair, but Murray's there. He's got the puck. Troy Murray, the big fellow, working with it. Off the inboards to the far side kick plate. 
The marksman will play along the end boards. Now to the point, Murray flutters in, and it's just wide of the net. That shot ricocheted off of two or three items of the way in. Now Lane with a wrap chance. Latinovich with a big save. The Havoc clear off the near boards. That's going to reach the goal line. And this will be icing with 16.38 remaining in regulation play. Fayetteville Marksman return home for a three-game set against the Peoria Rivermen next Friday, January 27th through Sunday, January 29th. Friday will be Hockey Fights Cancer Night, brought to you by the Zara Law Firm, part of Hockey Fights Cancer Weekend. Saturday will be Disney Night, and Sunday will be our third of four Salute to Service home games. Visit MarksmanHockey.com and click the Tickets tab to secure your seats today. Of course, the challenges just keep growing for the Marksmen as the Peoria Rivermen are enjoying a very good season after an Slow start again, Jean-Guy Trudel making his first trip to the Crown Coliseum in three seasons. Backhander to the far boards. It'll be taken by the Havoc, but only to the red line. And Huntsville has really struggled through the neutral zone in this hockey game. The zone entries have not been clean. Given down the near wing, here's Tyler Piacentini, cut off by Renda, who uses that reach to get around him. This is flipped up in the air, bounces once at the marksman attacking blue line. Connor Fries with a stick lift. He's going to settle this puck. Fayetteville looking for it. Mangold whacks at it, and now the marksman have it. Fries finds Mangold near hash mark. He lets it go. Latinovich awkwardly bats at it, but finds it in his glove. 15-43 left in this one. Also keep an eye on this. Marksmen are being outshot 21 to 16 in this game. Fayetteville, I think, has defended well for the most part. Connor O'Brien has come up with some good saves, most of them on the power play for the Havoc. But I'm going to have to go back in my notes and look at the last time the Marksmen had 30 shots on net in a game. If I were a betting man, and I'm not, I would be willing to tell you it was on the road December 30th at Macon. But I'll clarify that coming up at the next media timeout. To the near wing, here's Nukovic. Gives it to the far side boards. Piacentini settling it at the far hash mark in the Havoc attacking end. This is pulled free by McNair as he'll lay it off the end boards to Jarrett Cup. Veteran defenseman out of Curry College lifts this one all the way down the length of the ice, and this will be icing. Jarrett Cup sitting on career game 198. So long as he starts the next two, he will hit 200 career games played in the SPHL. Corey Melkert has leaned on Cup at many times throughout the course of last season and this year. And for Jarrett Cup, trying to put it all together this season, as are many of the marksmen from last year who are behind their clip of points and production to this stage. But Cup, the heady veteran, really dedicated to the game. That is a thunderous collision at the far boards by Tanner Nagel. Dumped right back in here by the Havoc as Nagel discussing with Sam Hudgen, and I believe this is going to be offside. Now we've got a fight. Now they're going to go. Nagel has wrapped up with Casey Kolcheski. They wrestle each other to the ice. Kolcheski on top of Nagel. Nagel got back up. He's throwing undercuts now. Ben Everett and Jesse Burns stepping in to separate those two. Five for fighting each. Time out on the ice, we'll take it with him. 14.51 to go third period. Marksman up 3-2. Providing patients with a relaxing environment and high quality dental care, Carolina's Dentist offers positively different dentistry in Fayetteville, Rayford, and Spring Lake. We're in network with most insurance providers, and we offer flexible finite options to keep your dental care within reach. From cavity prevention to dramatic smile makeovers, we offer a variety of dental services for every step of your dental health journey. 
consider us your home for all of your dental care needs. Welcome back to Huntsville, Alabama. Tanner Nagel and Casey Kolcheski wrestle each other there. And we'll see if there's any extraneous penalties here. Faceoff is coming down to the marksman in, but there are five Havoc players. So no instigation there. And the only one in danger of that, by the way, was Kolcheski. But in the mind of Derek Bain, both willing combatants. So we're all good. Just simple five and five for fighting. We remain five on five on the ice. Got an arm up here, and uh, just as soon as I said that, Huntsville's going to take a penalty. This is going to be a hooking call, and it's going to go against Alex Kilcheski. So the St. Peter Pest Control power play will go to work here for the Fayetteville Marksman. Penalty comes 5-15 into the third period as Kilcheski will sit along with Kolcheski. And at least for the next two minutes, I'm not going to have to decipher on the pronunciation of the opening syllable. Matt McNair will take the face off here for the marksman. He wins it back to the point. But Tyler Piacentini gets by Drake Glover off the draw. And that will send the marksman back into their own end to grab this puck. This is Brian Bowen with speed. Chops it up the far side boards. Bowen over skates and a rolling puck. Settled and backhanded in to the attacking zone by Cy Nukovic. Connor O'Brien in the trapezoid will turn on his backhand. Give to Andrew Lane. Lane slides to the near boards for Matt McNair all the way around the kick plate. McCloy, the first there for the marksman. He's got the puck. Centers to Bowen. Fan of the one-timer. Brian Bowen catches up to the loose puck. Feeds the far wing. Settled here, a backdoor feed by Glover. Blocked as he was looking for McCloy at the near post. Two by two, they'll battle in that far corner. Minute 10 remaining in the marksman. St. Peter Pest Control power play. Near boards, Bowen pushes it up to the point for Andrew Lane. Settled to Drake Glover off the end boards. Now Matt McNair will go crashing for the puck. One free Glover's got to get over to the far boards, and he does. Another big collision as the puck is one free to Piacentini as he'll muscle it down the length of the ice. New power play unit on for the Marksman. It's given to the near side wing for Jack Patterson. Out of Bedford, Nova Scotia and Ontario Tech. Patterson's pass along the end boards, creates a chance in front. That puck is still loose and it's pitchforked over the net with Connor Fries having the last shot. And now a shorthanded chance for Huntsville. Carried in, one on one, O'Brien! Slams the door with the glove side leg pad. A massive save on the breakaway as he stonewalls Robbie Fisher. Fisher will take the puck here on his backhand. Could not get it around of Nick Mangone, 12.50 to go, third period. Kilcheski standing in the box and he is out. Nick Mangone turns to the near boards. Says puck bounces back to Matt McNair. His shot in front, tipped! Latinovich with one of his better ones of the night. Kyle Moore lurking in front, got the deflection. That would have been Moore's first point as a marksman this season, and now this is ninth game. Puck is wedged right along the marksman bench side door. Jason Pulaski looking along from his perch. And it is one free as the marksman dump it in. I tell you, Pulaski's eyes were fixated on that puck, and uh, Huntsville Havoc will ice it here. It's a netminder on the bench. You are the only one 
that is on the front line without any type of head protection. And Pulaski's eyes trained to the puck as should be for every good netminder. So the faceoff will go to the glove side of Latinovich. It's won by the Havoc, who trailed the marksman by a single goal in this third period. This is Jacob Barber. They'll drop it for Derek Pearl, whose shot is blocked. Pearl now punches it back to the net front. It's behind the cage. And wrapped up by Bear Gendinov. All the way up to the far point now. Dominic Prokopio's shot is wide. Behind the net, Gendinov sweeping at it, taken by Cody Walsh. Up the far glass it goes, it hit a stanchion. It will bounce back to Huntsville, but everyone has to touch up and get back on side. Bear Gendinov carries the puck into the near side corner. Was cut off by Cup. The marksman will snap it into the attacking zone themselves. Good speed here from Nick Mangone, who's on his horse. But it'll be taken, moved up ice by Alex Kilcheski. Kilcheski turns and fires. His shot ricochets off of Troy Murray, who now will walk him to the corner boards. A centering feed and a rolling puck taken away by the marksman. 11 minutes to go, third period. Nick Mangone bobbing and weaving through the neutral zone. He'll take it himself. Fires a rising wrist shot caught by Latinovich, and that'll give us a whistle. Three two marksman. Huntsville out shooting Fayetteville 22-19 in this game. It's one of those Corey Melkert trademarked hockey games to this point. You don't have to have the most shots on net to score the most goals. Draw one by the marksman. Troy Murray will give to Renda, and he'll lay it behind the net in the trapezoid. Scooped up here by Glover, excuse me, rather, Fries. He'll drop it to Renda, who fumbles for a moment, and backhands to Brian Bowen. Bowen looks at Kyle Moore. His wrist shot bounces up in the air. Settle behind the net. As Connor Fries reaches for it, Kielczewski all over him. One free to the near boards. Here's Tyler Piacentini. 5-4, driving down the near wing. He's slippery. Troy Murray, that's great defensive awareness as he did not try to run through Piacentini, just braced himself as not to take a penalty for any type of thunderous collision. Two by two, they battle in the near corner. Nearly halfway home in this third period. Nukovic lays it behind the net. Piacentini turns and fires a little floater, caught by O'Brien, and he'll hold. Ten oh three to go, third period. The Fayetteville Marksman looking to snap a three-game losing skid. Huntsville trying not to break a streak of their own where they have taken points in nine of their last ten. Seven of a possible eight for the Havoc. Their only falter coming in a shootout loss a couple of weekends ago. Centering feed as here come the marksmen. This is Glover, tried to curl it up ice for McCloy, who already has a goal in this game. Taylor McCloy, the near side hash marks, fumbles the puck to Sam Hunter. Now a head man feed that was intended for Jamie Bussell, misses him. This will be icing. That was a tight foot race. Fans aren't going to like it. Faceoff will go down to the Marksman attacking end. 9.41 to go third period. Marksman three, Havoc two. Hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. left in the third period. Fayetteville Marksman three, the Huntsville Havoc two. Austin Alger scored twice in this game, dubiously ejected for a hooking major late in the second period. 
Kyle Moore is going to see some increased ice time here in this third. Already has. Had a shot on goal off of a deflection. And nearly had another one that was partially blocked off of a skate. Here's Jack Patterson reaching for this puck. It'll settle to the marksman at Andrew Lane. Lane ahead of the red line, near boards. He'll backhand it behind the net where it's settled by Nikolatinovic. He'll give all the way up ice to the forward core. It's taken up the far side wing, Bussell. Drops for Nate Hudgen as he gets pummeled. And now a centering feed to the back door. They score on the rebound. Nate Hudgen driving the back door is going to get rewarded for his effort all night long. We're even at three. That was a warrior mentality and a big time goal for the Huntsville Havoc. It's the Fayetteville Marksman have watched what was at once a two-goal lead dissipate to a tie game. So we've guaranteed another goal will be scored tonight. The only question is who will score it. Nathan Hudgens, seventh of the season. The Fayetteville Marksman now have a streak of their own in jeopardy. Here's a centering pass as Gendinov was unable to settle the puck flat. Hard collision here as Nagel registers a collision on his man. Sam Hunter had the initial shot from the corner on the Hudgen goal. The marksman will zip it all the way up ice. This is beyond everyone icing with 8.18 to go in the third period. Told you this is a Huntsville team that plays noticeably well at home, 10-3-1 at the BBC this year. But the marksman going to have to try to pull this one out late once again. This will be the fourth straight game where it has been a one-goal game or tied in the third period. Connor Fries snaps it to the far side face-off circle. The pass taken away. Charging up ice with it is Sam Hunter. Tried to give to Piacentini, but had his stick tied up. 7.50 remaining in the third period. This is Jack Patterson. Turned to the near side boards. Tried to pull cue it up ice. Instead, it will be taken by Huntsville and turned over. Now flipped up ice. This is McNair. Chops it. And a great stop by Latinovich. Matt McNair did all he could to get that shot on net. And he nearly gave the marksman a lead late. Andrew Lane will take it from his own end on the reset. Gains the red line, dumps it in. Latinovich will stop it behind the net. Turns and gives to the far corner. Procopio floats it ahead of the red line. It'll be settled here by the marksman, Troy Murray. Snaps it up ice looking for McCloy. Lane will come back to the puck, lays it off the far boards. McCloy pulls out the nine iron and whacks it back behind the net. Snapped off the near boards. This is Troy Murray. Off the end wall, hard collision at the net front as McCloy ran into his teammate, Drake Glover. Now down the near boards, Nate Hudgen, who tied this game for Huntsville moments ago. He's unable to hold the puck as the marksmen battle up the far boards, out to the red line, not with possession, 640 left third period. Snapped around to the near side half wall. Andrew Lane picks it up. Bear Gendinov all over him. Nick Mangold to the near side wing. Gives it to Connor Fries, who overskates the puck. Jacob Barber picks it up and rather quiet, of course, conserving energy for Barber and making sure that he's going to be good to go and play a full game's worth of shift after he was banged up last weekend. Behind the net. Connor Fries, unable to secure cleanly. Up the far side boards, this will roll and be settled. Hammered in by Kilcheski. It is a rising slapper caught by O'Brien without giving a second chance. 6.02 remaining in this third period. Two 
told you at the start of the frame, it seemed like this was the biggest period of the season for the marksman. I'll raise the ante. It is now the biggest six minutes of the season for the Fayetteville marksman. To the point, a slap shot by Kilcheski, watched in by O'Brien, he'll cover. One thing you can say about Connor O'Brien, though, is the kid is a gamer. He has battled time and time again. He's seen traffic in front of him tonight. It's just a mentality. You heard Corey Melkert say it in his pregame comments. He thought O'Brien stole the game a couple of Sundays ago in Quad City, a 48-save performance. Hard to argue with that. O'Brien gave him every reasonable chance to win against Roanoke last Saturday. He's played an admirable game here this evening as well. Up the far glass, and this one will ricochet by everyone. Alex Kilcheski spinning back to chase it. Havoc taken on the far half wall. Now Tyler Piacentini gives to Nukovic up the far wing. Sai Nukovic backhands it behind the net. Piacentini rubbed out by Jarrett Cup. He'll get help from Renda, 535 remaining in regulation. Pull cued free by Vincenzo Renda, but right to the Havoc. Up at the point, Chris Jones. Hanging on to it, he snaps it through traffic. Blocked, a chance in front, O'Brien! A massive save on Piacentini to keep it tied. Connor O'Brien squeezing those navy and green pads together. Keeps the puck out and keeps it 3-3. Better buckle in for these final 521. Long shot through traffic. It hits the backside of Casey Kolcheski, and the marksmen get to it. This pass is over the stick of Jack Patterson. If it reaches the goal line, it's icing, and it does. Face off comes back down to Connor O'Brien's end. This is not exactly what you would like to see. Face off will be the blocker side of O'Brien. And it is won by the marksman. They may have a two on two rush. Bowen to Patterson and the marksmen are offside. Things once again come down to the wire for the marksman. I can tell you at this point, the emotion of this game is going to rock to one extreme or the other based on the final result. This is an emotional banner win for the marksman if they can get the job done and a soul crushing loss if they falter here. That puck hops up and into the Huntsville bench. 4.56 to go in the third period. 3-3, we go down the stretch when we return. Have you been hurt? <laughs> Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. been a classic all night long. The Fayetteville Marksman looking for two massive points tonight. They will need to score one more in order to get that. 4.45 to go third period as this one is sent out of play. Was it deflected? The answer is no. It will be a delay of game penalty. 
that will go against Andrew Lane. And the Huntsville Havoc will have a power play in the final stages of this third period. Penalty officially will be 15-15 into the third period. Havoc have scored once in the power play but came up empty on their five minute one at the end of the second. It's the top group out there. This is Alex Kielczewski to the near wing. Rob Dara feeds the far side face off circle looking for Nukovic. The pass broken up, now Dara pinching. Lays behind the net for Piacentini who gets sandwiched here. Marksman dig the puck free up the near glass. That one is out. 30 seconds gone by in the lane minor as he sits on pins and needles in the penalty box. Taken by Nukovic. Ahead of the red line he goes. He's rubbed off the puck as it bounces back beyond the blue line. So Kilcheski to Rob Dar for the reset. Now the far side board, side Nukovic. Has some space, fires to Dara, a one-timer knocked away by O'Brien, out of play. I don't believe Rob Dara meant to put that puck back on the far post and shoot against the grain. But Connor O'Brien with a good, challenging save. Next unit up for Huntsville. Casey Kolcheski will take the face off. Nathan Hudgen lined up the near side boards, pushing and shoving with Cody Walsh. Draw one by Taylor McCloy for the marksman. In the near corner, McCloy had a stick tapped at. It's a puck battle ensues near corner. Hard hit delivered. This is Derek Pearl. Gives to the far wing as Huntsville looks to set it up. A pass to the point for Hudgen, intercepted. Marksman may have a chance and a wise play by McCloy not to force the issue, he'll just ice it. Pressure provided here by Drake Glover. As Huntsville is out of it and here they go. Backhanded and dumped in by Huntsville. Crashing here is Bear Gendinov for the puck. Gendinov digging after it. So he has Nick Mangon charging after him. This is killing time, 20 seconds remain in the lane minor, three minutes to go in regulation. To the near point, Derek Pearl slides to his defensive partner, who in this case is Jacob Barber. Give it to the far wing, and now across for Hudgen at the top of the near circle. To Barber, far circle, lets it go. What a block! Herculean by Nick Mangone, and he's stung by it. Hudgen to the near side circle, the pass in front, the puck loose, ripped down the length of the rink! And Nick Mangone is in pain. Mangone took that one hard off the lower body. Stick taps to that young man for complete and total sellout and sacrifice. Trainer Kyle Sherrill having a look at Nick Mangone. And he's gonna get him off the bench. We'll keep an eye on 23 and white for you. Kid's a warrior. Huntsville with a long shot, tipped and O'Brien punched it out! Huge stop by the marksman, Netminder, and now a chance two on one for Fayetteville! Driven in, Glover shoots, and it's blocked! What a play on the other end by Hudgen. And now he'll start the rush the other way. Nukovic shoots, partially blocked, and the Havoc will establish in their own end. 2.10 to go, third period. The puck squirts back out to center. Marksman have it, three on two. Jack Patterson, the rookie centerman, driving up icy turns into the near side corner. Gives to Brian Bowen at the near hash. Bowen lets it go. It makes its way to Latinovic. He'll catch and hold. A minute and 56 seconds to go in this third period. The Fayetteville marksmen need standings points in the worst way possible. The Pensacola Ice Flyers are about to finish a win over the Macon Mayhem 
That means they'll be within a game of the Marksmen if Fayetteville can come away with nothing. The Marksmen want to keep it at a two-game spread. It's a draw that is won by McNair, but nobody was able to catch up to it. Takedown through neutral ice, and there's no call. Dumped in as Cody Walsh finds the puck, clears it up to Drake Glover. He puts it in the skates of Matt McNair, and he gets hit hard. Took one from Bear Gendinov, swiped at him. And we're going to keep going as that certainly seemed to be a hit to the back of McNair. 90 seconds left to go, third period. Havoc will bring it up the near side boards as it's snapped in by Dominic Procopio. In front, it hit the crossbar! Hudgen nearly ended the hockey game in favor of the home team, and he hit the bar. Jarrett Cup sends it back out to center. Nathan Hudgen has had the hot hand tonight. Zipped around to the near boards. Jack Patterson unable to stop it. This is going to go all the way to the goal line and will be icing for the marksman. 55 seconds to go, third period. What at one point was a marksman 3-1 lead in the second period has evaporated to a 3-3 tie. The Havoc have owned the last five minutes of this one. Connor O'Brien, 27 saves. And a face-off to his glove side. Won by the Havoc. Turning with it here is Hudgen. Feeds the back door. They score. <laughs> 48 and a half seconds left. And the Huntsville Havoc have taken a lead in the final minute of this game. And you can immediately see the frustration of the marksman bench. Corey Melkert will call timeout right here. He will try to draw up something. It's for the first time this season, the marksman trail in a third period where they had the lead going into it. We'll await the official goal scorer for you in a moment. It's the Havoc have scored the last three unanswered. And the Marksmen are going to need a miracle. Goal scorer will be Nate Hudgen. Excuse me, rather. It's not been officially updated as of yet. Just the score, so we await the official line. 48 seconds left. O'Brien parked in his goal crease. Dumped in by the marksman. It's going to be Sam Hunter's goal. Marksman chase in the near corner. Extra attacker coming in here. That puck is jammed in the near side boards. Doug Free, Bowen. Feeds the point, Andrew Lane. Dumps it into the far side corner. Derek Pearl wins it up. Lane's going to hold the line here. Far side corner. Marksman just trying to work it to the net front. They do, but it's intercepted. Huntsville sends it up the near glass. It is out 10 seconds to go. Marksman finding the puck in their own end. A headman look to Brian Bowen with five seconds to go in the game. He'll drop it, and the Marksmen are offside. And that one might just do it. The third period has finally bitten the marksmen when they have the lead. All this requires is a face-off win. The horn will sound. And the Huntsville Havoc defeat the Fayetteville marksmen 4-3 on home ice.
a complete and utter loss for words for the Fayetteville Marksmen. These two teams will face off again tomorrow. As it stands, this one's going to sting for a little while. We'll wrap it up for you when we come back. Hey, hey you, are you hearing this but not seeing this? You can change that. Follow along with the entire season of Fayetteville Marksman Hockey on Hockey TV. Visit HockeyTV.com backslash subscriptions and get the SPHL TV package to watch every single Fayetteville Marksman road game this year. That's Hockey TV backslash subscriptions. Have you been hurt? Tired of feeling sore? Aww. Let Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine help you. Since 1973, the doctors and physical therapists at Cape Fear Ortho have remained the experts in providing exceptional, experienced orthopedic care. From surgery to physical therapy, we can help get your body back on the right track to make you feel great again. Cape Fear Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the official orthopedic provider of the Fayetteville Marksman. Experience the thrill of being a Fayetteville Marksman season ticket holder and all the benefits that come along with it, including your same great seat for 28 or 14 home games, exclusive season ticket member events, and an opportunity to enjoy discounts on food and beverage and merchandise at the Crown Coliseum. Skate to MarksmanHockey.com backslash season tickets to learn more. Webb Carpet Company has been the finest in Fayetteville flooring since 1965. Our friendly and courteous staff will help you find the flooring of your dreams, including the best in pet-friendly carpet. Once you've selected your dream floor, our professional sales and installation teams will ensure your floor buying experience is exceptional. Visit us today on Rayford Road and at webcarpet.net. Go Archman! A stinging loss for the Fayetteville Marksmen here in Huntsville, Alabama. A game that the Marksmen certainly had the opportunity to win, and they have been so good at locking games down. It is the first time that the Marksmen have lost all season when they have the lead going into the third period. The Huntsville Havoc will do that to you. Fayetteville falls to 15-14-2. They are on the season's second four-game losing skid as Huntsville will improve to 19-9-2. And the Marksman just unable to finish it tonight. And this is a gut punch of a loss. And what's worse is you thought at least you'd be able to take it to overtime. And because of a lapse in defensive decision-making, now the Marksmen have no points. Making matters even more concerning, the Pensacola Ice Flyers got a win tonight, so that means Pensacola in eighth place is now just a game behind the Marksmen with games looming tomorrow. And for Fayetteville, tomorrow's game has to be one where you pick yourself up and you figure out a way to get the job done because this one, this one is gonna hurt for a long, long time if you do not get the job done tomorrow. So as it stands, final stats for you. For the Marksman, shots on goal in the third period, eight for a game total of 21. For Huntsville, it is, let's see how good my quick math is, nine. <laughs> nope, beg your pardon, 12. Game total, 31. On the power play, the Fayetteville Marksmen go one for two on the St. Peter Pest Control power play. It is a one for four showing for the Huntsville Havoc. But Sam Hunter's goal at the tail end of the hockey game, 19-12 into the third period. So he drives the far side post, beats Connor O'Brien. 
And that's one that you're going to sleep seeing a lot of here this evening. And if you're Corey Melker, that one might keep you up. Marksmen are going to get another chance tomorrow, and we'll hope you'll join us for that one. It will be an 8 p.m. puck drop with 7.45 p.m. pregame coverage right here on the Marksman Radio Network and Hockey TV. Folks, that's a tough one, but we hope you enjoyed this one as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Until next time, I'm Drew Blevins. Good night.